Hi there once again, and welcome to Mondays with Mike. Huge day here on Fox 26, Game 7. Nothing beats a Game 7. There's nothing like a Game 7, especially when it's in your home uh, field. And, well, although the Astros have had a hard time at home, we need to definitely get the win. We head to the World Series. Now, i got some Astros orange on the map behind me here as well. What I want to talk about is the El Nino and how it factors into the wintertime forecast. Now, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, they recently released their winter outlook uh, for the season. You know, are we going to be cooler and drier? Are we going to be warmer and wetter, vice versa, any con uh, kind of those combinations? So a lot of that has to do with the status of the El Nino and what are called teleconnections. Now, teleconnection sounds like it's a telephone, but it isn't. Teleconnections means that weather or oceanic conditions in one part of the world can have wide-reaching effects on another part of the world. So what I have behind me is a look at what's called temperature anomalies. So the blue areas are areas where the water temperature is below normal. We don't have many of those areas. And then the areas that are yellow or especially orange are areas where we're above average on our um, water temperatures as far as what's called the temperature anomaly. So this is what's happening across the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. But what we really want to watch is what's happening out here in the Pacific Ocean with what's called the El Nino Southern Oscillation. It's called ENSO for short. Why is it called the Southern Oscillation? Well, it occurs to the south uh, here along the equator, but it's basically a sloshing back and forth of water and air pressure across this equatorial region of the Pacific. Now this happens on a cycle every three to seven years or so. You'll have um, higher pressure in the western part of the um, Pacific Ocean that'll kind of push the water in this direction, which keeps conditions warmer. Or you could have higher pressure in this part of the Pacific, which pushes the water away from the west coast of South America, which causes upwelling. So like the cold water below the surface kind of rises up to the top and makes conditions uh, chillier. That's what we call a, a La Nina, by the way. This year is an El Nino. In fact, it's a strong El Nino. So that's where you see these orange colors showing up across the equatorial regions of the Pacific. Well, why do we care about what is happening in the Pacific Ocean? What does water temperature in the Pacific have to do with anything? Well, it actually has big effects on both hurricane season and on our winter forecasts across the United States. So typically during hurricane season, um, this pattern of having warmer air here and cooler air here causes a stronger jet stream to move across here and to cross into the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. And that's probably one of the reasons why we had limited activity uh, in the Gulf this season. Yes, of course, we did have Hurricane Adalia, which was a big one that moved into the Big Bend region of Florida. But for Texas, you know, there wasn't that much that happened. We had Tropical Storm Harold moved into South Texas. It was, you know, sort of a rainmaker for South Texas, but that was about it. We did not have many threats in the Gulf, especially on our part of the Gulf. And a lot of that did have to do with the combination of our big area of high pressure, obviously that brought us all the cold, or all the uh, hot uh, winter, uh, summertime conditions, excuse me, but also help to steer everything away. Now, the connections or the teleconnections with this and winter in the United States are pretty well established. They're pretty well known. And so this is the look at the El Nino effects during the winter time in the United States. And so this is what you would call a La Nina, where the trade winds that blow this way keep the warmest water in the western part of the Pacific Ocean, keeps conditions cool over here um, in an average or a La Nina winter. What we have right now is that the winds are blowing a little bit more from west to east, piling up this warm water here. So it's created um, a, an El Nino phase. Now, the effects that that has on the United States, like I said, are pretty well understood and pretty well established. Now, none of this is a guarantee but typically in an El Nino year, almost always, we end up with wetter conditions across the southern part of the United States, the southern half. So that goes from California to Texas, back over to Florida. We also tend to have uh, fewer, you know, big Arctic outbreaks in the northern part of the uh, United States. 
Now, what I want to make sure you know is that when we're talking about wetter, we're mainly talking about on average wetter. It doesn't mean it's going to be raining every day, but it means when you take a look at the average season, the number of cloudy days we have, the number of rainy days we have, there tend to be more of those when we have an El Nino taking place in the Pacific. So a wetter pattern likely to set up. When we have wetter conditions, we also have more cloud cover. Typically when we have cloudy skies, we have fewer freezes because freezes tend to happen on clear cold, uh, clear nights with light winds. When we have cloud cover around, you may stay chillier during the day because you don't have the sunshine coming in, but you also tend to stay uh, a little bit warmer at night on average. Again, we're talking about just on average. So this is a look at NOAA's forecast. So this is the forecast from NOAA and the National Weather Service of the entire country and the likelihood of being either drier than normal or wetter than normal. And here we are in Texas with a high likelihood for wetter than normal conditions. In fact, that goes from California here to Texas and then back over to Florida. In fact, Florida has the highest likelihood of having above average um, rainfall over the winter season. But it looks like with the El Nino phase kicking in, the wetter conditions should be taking hold across Texas and drier conditions across parts of the northern U.S., which could mean less snowfall, for example, there in the northern Rocky Mountains and in the northern plains. What about the temperature forecast? Well, as I showed you in the previous graphic, the effects of La Nina, uh, or excuse me, El Nino on our part of the country tend to be related to rain. More rain, more clouds. So on average, our temperature should be near normal. So right now, that's the outlook, is that there's equal chances here of it being warmer or cooler, probably somewhere in the middle. Notice though that a big chunk of the country is going to have above average temperatures coming up for the winter time. So that would favor a little bit less snow. It would favor a lower likelihood for Arctic outbreaks to come down into Texas on average when you take the whole you know three month season um, as a whole. They define by the way winter not as December 21st to March 21st but as December 1st through February 29th. I think it's a leap year. Um, so during that three month period which is considered meteor meteorological winter. So that's what we're looking for. Most likely near average temperatures, above average rain, and probably less sunshine. So you can count on it being, uh, if you have anything, let's say you have something planned, you know, outdoors for Thanksgiving, or you're wondering what Christmas morning is going to be like. Well, obviously it's too far out for us to have any confidence of exactly, you know, what the forecast is going to be for Christmas. But we can say that if you were placing bets, it would be more likely that it would be sort of a drizzly, rainy kind of Christmas time as opposed to a you know sunny and dry Christmas time on average. So that's the NOAA winter outlook. Of course, go Strohs for tonight. Wear your orange, your navy and orange. We need a win big time to send us off to the World Series. Now, we don't know if we're going to play the Phillies or the Diamondbacks yet, although the Phillies are winning that series. We shall find out. So again, it is tonight here on Fox 26. Our coverage begins at 6 p.m. with Swing for the Ring. The game starts at 7, technically 7.03. So definitely be sure to watch. I'm probably going to watch the first inning and then go to sleep and then wake up and find out what happens. So thanks again for tuning in for Mondays with Mike. I would give a shout out to my mom and my brother, Neil, but they're here in Houston. So I don't have to give them a shout out. I don't think that they'll watch this week. Maybe they will. All right, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Go Strohs.